Okay, in this video clip I'm going to take a look at swaptions. Uh, swaptions are options and swaps. So the, the swap market is a, a very significant market. It's a derivatives market. It's also an important component of the fixed income, mar fixed income market. Um, many market participants very often uh, swaps are designed to trade uh, fixed for floating rates of interest and the LIBOR rate is generally the the principal reference rate for the variable rate that's being swapped. But a swaption is an option to enter into a swap. And while the, the swaps market is huge um, and very liquid, this also would encourage quite a bit of trading activity on the back of this market as well. So you can take a look here in terms of now, it's again, end of 2004, so the date is quite dated, but the, again, one gets the sense of the, the size of the market in terms of the trillions. Notional principle sometimes uh, exaggerates slightly the degree to which money is changing hands because in swap type agreements, it is a fix for floating exchange and only net amounts, in fact, are uh, swapping across. But even still, the market is significant and very, very liquid. And for that reason alone, uh, swaptions are also um, important here. So um, there's two types of swaptions. There's payer swaptions and receiver swaptions. Um, and the payer swaption is where the owner has the right to pay fixed. Right? So, so somebody is paying the fixed side of the swap. Somebody must also pay the floating. Alternatively, you could enter into a receiver swap, swaption, and then you have the right uh, to receive the fix. Okay, so we don't say, we don't use the f terminology of a call and a put, but uh, we'll see later when we set up the black model, the payer swaption is like call swap. Um, if we're to try and compare it against options on interest rates or options on bonds, the, 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 the payer swaption is akin to a call option, the receiver swaption is akin to the put option. Okay, we'll examine that in a moment. Uh, the swaption market, participants of the swaption market are predominantly large corporations, banks, financial institutions, hedge funds. Okay, and so these are the big players, Citigroup, Bank of America, JP Morgan. And of course the over-the-counter market generally for both swaps and swaptions is the bigger comprises the major component of trading right so we'll we'll have a look at valuations for european options we use the black model for if we want to look at american options then we're probably forced to use some kind of bone binomial construction but for the moment i'm just going to look at the black model and the example i'm going to take comes from uh, john c hull's book option futures other derivatives okay so uh, this book is generally a key reference textbook for derivatives and then um, I'm going to take an example from that book. So um, okay let's start with an example then. Uh, consider the LIBOR rate is flat at 6% with continuous uh, compounding. Consider a swaption that gives the holder the right to pay 6.2 in a three-year swap starting in five years. So the, the option component here is has five years to maturity. And then at the five-year point, we've got to decide, do we want to enter into the agreement? Do we want to proceed with the swap or not? So you have the, the option here gives you the optionality, or gives you the privilege of either entering into the swap or walking away. And because you have the right to pay 6.2, you're only really likely to do that um, if the LIBOR rate you receive is higher. So the right to pay 6.2 becomes attractive in five years' time if the LIBOR rate that you're getting back is in excess of that 6.2. So this is, if you like, a bet that the LIBOR rate is going to go up or it may be a hedge against the LIBOR rate increasing value. You might take a look at a little graph. Okay, so I've just come across this... Uh, online sketching um, facility here and it seems okay so I, I'm going to draw kind of basic outline of a swap 
uh, at one level here we have this 6.2 um, and um, that 6.2 is kind of a fixed rate and you have a right to pay that um, so if you enter into a swap of course it becomes an obligation but we could think of a counterparty here A and they are considering should they pay 6.2 to the other counterparty, the counter counterparty we can just call B, and that counterparty is committing if they receive the 6.2 then in return they will put back uh, some variable rate okay and a, a typical variable rate reference rate for these swap type um, contracts is LIBOR London Interbank Offer Rate now, under what circumstance will 6.2 be attractive to pay B in five years' time? It will be attractive to B if it will be attractive to A if the library rate turns out after five years has passed to exceed um, 6.2. So again, if you go back to the question, we have um, the basis here is. Consider a swap option that gives the holder right to pay 6.2 in a three-year swap starting in five years. Okay, so if we if we could go in, I mean, it might be no harm to do kind of a timeline here. So we can imagine uh, nothing happens for, let's say, five years. My line is not terribly straight. So there's five years. We get to year five, and at year five, we've got to make the decision. Of course, we are currently in this time period, time period zero. And we're looking at the value of the swap from this time period here. But then what does this swaption uh, combined with the swap involve? It, it implies that in year five, after one year, two years, three years, four years, five years passes, we have to decide, do we want to enter into this agreement, take on A's position to pay 6.2 and receive the LIBOR rate back in return? Now, the if we look at the... A feature here of, of this swaption is that the payments are not annual or semi-annual. So we're going to look at the, the swaption in terms of, you know, 5.5 years, 6 years, 6.5 years, 7 years, 7.5 years, 8 years. Okay, so there's a, there's a 6 years, there's a 7 years, if I can do this right, and then 8 years. And in between, at the six monthly interval, there's also payments going to occur um, across on, on the swaptions. Okay, so um, do you want to enter into this position where you'll pay 6.2 and receive LIBOR and it's going to take place here? You will only be interested in doing that if the LIBOR rate in year five is expected over this three year term to be higher than 6.2. Okay, so we go back to. Um, the estimation again. Also, because it's the black model, typically in the black model you've got to discount. There is a, if you like, there's an amount of principal, so the swap is based on some amount of money. It could be 100 million, could be 10 million. Then the there's a discount factor. Normally it's E, the exponential negative RT in the black model. But in this instance, A is not just a once-off discounting there is a number of payments that are going to occur and they're going to occur at six monthly intervals at month at year 5.5 .5, at year 6 at year 6.5 up and including year 8 and because it's semi-annual the amounts that are changing hands are going to be divided by two so we adjust the annuity if you like by dividing by two okay and that annuity then appears this two zero zero three five that appears down here in our estimation so again we can see that a will be multiplied by some principal 100 okay we're going to assume that the principal is 100 or maybe it's 100 million and that the we're also going to assume that the interest rate is assumed the LIBOR the LIBOR yield curve is flat at six percent per annum with continuous compounding in other, in other words if you like, and this is not a terribly realistic type situation. In other words, we're going to assume, we're going to assume, let's go blank, create. We're going to assume that we have this timeline. 
And that, again, that should be a flat straight line, but my mouse abilities here not terribly well developed. But we're just going to assume that for any indefinite time period, that the interest rate is 6% continuous. Okay. And this could be up to 30 years. We, we haven't specified the, you know, end date here. So for any time period over and above and including the period of this option, the swap option, the interest rate is going to be 6%. Okay. Uh, continuously compounded. And that implies that the, the forward swap rate, right, the S0, is which is a semi-annual rate will be 6.09 now to make the connection between the 6 and the 6.09 um is relatively straightforward we create we can think of the the continuous rate as being e to the power of 0 0.06 okay so we have 0 0.06 and we do have a time period here, but we can leave it out. We can say that's equal to some discrete rate. And what's the discrete rate? Well, it's a semi-annual rate. So 1 plus some unknown semi-annual rate divided by 2 to the power of 2. And then to adjust this, we divide we just divide this by 2. So, so in fact, what we're actually doing is I can take the tools here for a second. Um, we started here without this 2 being present at all. We know that the continuous rate, the exponential rate, the continuous rate can be estimated using e to the power of 0 0.06 to give the 6% continuous rate. We want to find out an equivalent semi-annual rate. And we've adjusted that rate by dividing by 2 and doing the conventional power up uh, by 2 here. We want to solve what r is equal to to get the semi-annual rate. First thing we can do is, if we divide this side by 2, it would become 1, and it would fall out. But if we divide this side by 2, then in fact we've got to follow suit and divide the power on this side also by 2. So basically 2 divided by 2 this side is equivalent to having to the power of 1. And having to the power of 1 is the same as having um, just itself. So normally we don't observe that to the power of 1 there anyway. Uh, then we want to isolate r on its own, so we've got to bring over the 1. So we can take out the equal sign here, we can take out the brackets, and we can take out this bracket here. So we can say minus 1 instead of equal to 1. We can say e to the power of 0 0.06 divided by 2 minus 1 is equal to, and we've got to get our eraser going is equal to r divided by 2. So r equal r divided by 2 and then that opens the door to multiplying both sides by 2. So I come over this side, apply brackets here and apply brackets here and I remove I multiply the right hand side by 2. So instead of having r divided by 2 here what in fact I end up getting is R isolated on its own, expressed in terms of everything else. Okay, and so that's just R here. And then if we were to work that out, E2 multiplied by E to the power of 0 0.06 divided by 2 minus 1, we would get 6.09, and it is recurring a bit, equal to R. Okay, so this value, 6.09 equal to R, is how we arrive at this 6.09 here. So it comes out of this continuous rate. We say that the term structure is flat, the LIBOR yield curve is flat at 6%. Both forward and spot rates then have to be uh, 6%. But that would also mean the semi-annual rate would have to be 6%. And that's the, the rate then, this semi-annual, this forward swap rate, is what we will include here. So when we're estimating D1, it will be natural logarithm the 6.09 divided by the 6.2, the rate at which we've agreed to fix, to pay the fixed uh, side of the swap. 
and then the volatility, the variance of the swap, the volatility is 20%, so 0 